talked a fair amount to people, often very young people, in the LGBT community, especially oh, in the LGBT community, and especially trans people who live all over the state and all over the country, thanks to this wonderful thing you talked about earlier called the internet, <laughs> and who are worried about their future in the places where they live and who want to come to a place like the Bay Area. And they ask, what would it take for me to come and live in the Bay Area mm -hmm. where I'll be accepted to work and go around and assume that people will be at least moderately friendly to <laughs> And I have to tell these people, well, you can share an apartment if you're lucky for like $1,500 or $1,500 a month. Mm -hmm. And they go, what? And my question to you is, I think that there's a structural issue with the way that we're doing politics, where we have a bunch of people in the room here who have legitimate concerns, concerns of one segment of the population, mm -hmm. and who are not touched by these kinds of issues. How do we make sure that we bring in a wider variety of voices? Mm -hmm. um, that's really my question. Like, I, I would love to have any ideas for these places. Well, how do we do that? Yeah. No, no, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Are you breathing up? I'm done. Okay, great, thank you for that. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, one, one, around housing in particular, one thing, um, you know, I was sworn in to the Board of Supervisors January 2011, and even just over the last, you know, whatever, seven, seven years, uh, I've seen uh, there's more um, uh, diverse voices in terms of viewpoints uh, around housing uh, that are being represented. And I think actually, Today, uh, you know, even though people are you know booing or applauding and all that, it's like it's a democracy and it's beautiful. Um, the the fact that we're you know, have a community town hall where housing is a really you know passionate issue uh, for you know probably almost everyone here, if not everyone, and you have very divergent perspectives so uh, represented. So I I feel like uh, because of the depth of this housing crisis and how the, and everyone I think probably agrees that we are in real crisis. Because perspectives on how to solve it. Um, uh, you know, we are, uh, because of how serious it is and the damage it's doing, um, I think more voices are being uh, brought out. And I think that's healthy. It's healthy. I'm, I'm glad that there are people here who oppose SB 827. You're my constituents, some people I've worked with in the past, telling me what they think, and I applaud that. And I'm glad that there are people here uh, who support it. So I think we do have a healthier dialogue around housing where people can sometimes have uncomfortable conversations, but important conversations. Because the Bay Area has always, you know, I came here 20 years ago as a 27 year old. Um, there are a lot of, you know, I was lucky. I came here had a job lined up. Um, I was able to rent a place. Um, uh, I could not afford to move into my own neighborhood today, by the way, if I were to start that all over again. Uh, uh, but there are a lot of, you know, this is a place where young people have always come, whether it's, you know, uh, people immigrating uh, from Mexico, whether it is the hippie, you know, hippies came here in, you know, the 60s and beyond, uh, whether it's LGBT people, whether it's just people who just decide, I want to live in the Bay Area because it's a, the best place on the planet. Uh, and we, you know, one, one of the hallmarks of this region is that we, we really want to welcome people here, and it's hard to welcome people in housing. So, um, okay. Um, 